Welcome to Battle of the Retro Graphics Cards. This is the first video in a series of videos that I hope to do where we take a look at a few different uh, AGP graphics cards and we decide which one is the better of the bunch. And I also hope to talk a little bit about buying AGP graphics cards and um, other things like which operating system certain cards are best for, etc. So today we're going to be comparing the ATI Radian X1300 to the ATI Radian X1600. It's important to note that both graphics cards use DDR technology for the RAM. Um, in this series, we don't really take a look at the numbers much though. We want to see real world performance, but the X1300 has 256 megabytes of DDR RAM, whereas the X1600 has 512 megabytes of DDR RAM. But does it really make that big of a difference? We'll start off by benchmarking the ATI Radeon X1300 and then after that we will benchmark the ATI Radeon X1600 and then we'll quickly talk about which one is better and which one you should get even if you should get either of them. So let's dive right into it. Our benchmarking system is an AMD Athlon 64X2 3800 Plus running at 2.01 GHz with 2 GB of DDR RAM running at 333 MHz unfortunately not dual channel, I'll have to figure out why later. Uh, this config allows us to eliminate the CPU as the bottleneck. I don't think the RAM will be too much of a bottleneck. So really, the only bottleneck here is the graphics card itself. We're going to be starting things off with Need for Speed Underground 1. Um, a thing to note is that every single video game will be ran at 720p unless stated otherwise. This is just kind of the max resolution you want to be running vintage titles at. So you can see all my settings are basically maxed out here and the game is running pretty decently. We're getting a solid 60 FPS, but for some reason we do get dips. And I was not getting those dips when I had a better GPU in the system. So uh, I'm not too sure. Maybe this is a limitation of the RAM, the VRAM. I don't know. We'll have to find out. But we were getting random dips into the 40s and 50s, but overall very, very, very playable experience. So no complaints here. Next up, Juiced 1, a title from 2005, I believe. As you can see, I set the anti-aliasing to level 1. Um, I had to turn off hardware mixing because it was giving me issues. The in-game settings, we turned the depth of field off and all that other stuff off, and then we left the rest at default, so track detail about half. Um, overall, it looked like we were getting about an average of 27 to 30 FPS. Um, it was relatively playable. Uh, you definitely notice that it was 30 FPS, but it seemed to be really consistent. So definitely playable and it looked all right. It definitely leaves more to be desired as well. Unreal Tournament 2003 at the max settings ran just fine. You will get dips into about 40, 50 though if you are doing a lot, there's a lot of action on screen, but otherwise it's very, very playable. So works fine, no complaints. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas is such a fun game, but it really, really does not like older hardware, and I'm not sure what it is. The Radeon X1300 just couldn't do it. Uh, I suspect if you were to disable anti-aliasing and maybe bump the resolution down to 480p, you could probably do it, but the moral of the story is it has to look like a potato to run decent on this card. So maybe this will run better on the X1600. Cry of Fear is one of my favorite games. It's just absolutely beautiful and it runs on the gold source engine which is very cool that's the half-life engine however there's a lot of tweaks done to it so it's basically hot rotted and it's a really good way to test old hardware because it really stresses both the cpu and the gpu on the radian x1300 it was actually very playable um, i couldn't get it to go full screen as you can see i kept getting an error but at 1280 by 960 we were getting about 30 fps on average so I would say that it was playable. Um, the only thing I went and did was disable the film green. Everything else was left at defaults. Lastly, we have the big boss, Half-Life 2. This is the most recent up-to-date Steam release. It does not get any newer than this. And as you can tell, with the settings relatively modest at native resolution, the X1300 just can't do it. It struggles. We're seeing about an average of about 20 to 25 FPS and adjusting the graphical settings to be lower really doesn't fix the problem. I think if you were to bump down the resolution to 
480p, you could see better frames, but it just wouldn't look good. So I would say this game is not playable on this graphics card. So the Radeon X1300 sadly kind of disappointed us. It left a little bit more to desire. There was a lot that it really couldn't do too well. So if we double the VRAM and crank up the clock speeds a little bit and basically get ourselves an X1600, which is what we have right here, will it run better? Let's find out. In Need for Speed Underground 1, we saw the exact same performance, except our dips weren't as noticeable. I found that the game would kind of dip down to about 50 FPS, which is really, really good. So we see a bit of an improvement there, but not a whole lot. Then again, it can't really improve much more than before. Juiced ran a lot better. We were getting about 40 to 50 FPS, but in return, we got some really, really, really bad micro stuttering. And honestly, I'd consider it unplayable. Unlike the X1300, which is a consistent 30 FPS, we were getting horrible micro stuttering. I'm not sure what was going on, but it was very bad. Unreal Tournament 2003 was literally the exact same as it was on the X1300. So I'm starting to wonder if there maybe is a little bit of a CPU or memory bottleneck going on here, or maybe it's just not really that different. I don't know, but there really wasn't a difference. It ran the same and we had the same dips when there was a lot going on. GTA San Andreas, the exact same story as before. It was horribly unplayable. You probably got about three or four more FPS and it did not make the difference between unplayable and playable. So it really struggled on this card. Cry of Fear ran about the exact same that it did on the 1300 except maybe you got a couple more FPS. Really not a big noticeable difference. It was very, very playable. Uh, just no visible improvement going on. Half-Life 2 really saw a benefit from the additional VRAM and it reflects with the higher FPS. Uh, however, the dips were pretty bad, just like last time. And when there was a lot of like particles or a lot of action on the screen, the the big big dips like down into the low 20s but like sub 20s uh, it was the same issue so I really would not consider it playable on this graphics card at 720p so who won the battle I'm gonna give it to the x1600 because it did push out slightly more FPS but honestly they're about the same the x1300 you can find for about $20 Canadian and the X1600 you find for about $50 to $60 Canadian. Uh, these are the AGP variants, by the way. Really, they're not good cards. They're really not good cards if you're wanting to do some Windows XP era gaming. And since there are no Windows 98 drivers for these cards, unless you're trying to do some earlier stuff, maybe like GTA 3 or Unreal Tournament 99, these graphics cards are just kind of a waste of money. They're not really that good. Um, the performance difference between them is basically negligible, and I was just very, very disappointed. Um, not good cards. Definitely not good cards. So stay tuned for the next video when we compare more graphics cards.